Hey folks, thanks for joining us. Today we're picking up where we left off in our last video, which was working in Unreal and just getting started with the Blueprint system. Now in our last video, if you remember what we did, we made a very simple setup that could just print different characters into the kind of game screen as we're running our game. Now, a common question that I see from a lot of folks getting into Unreal for interactive and kind of immersive media purposes is that they don't really want to use this default camera. You know, when you hit play and you click inside of the viewer, your mouse controls the camera. A lot of the keys on the keyboard are controlling the camera. And we all know clients, it's very easy for them to do one of these and say, oh my God, there's a bug in your system. And what I find is in most projects that I've ever done that you always kind of want to lock off the camera. And if there's even people interacting with the scene or if there's gener generative content being made, it's kind of made mostly with a locked off camera that then whether it's going to your screens or your projection is a different story. Now, with that said, by default, a lot of time in Unreal, when you're using player zero, we have full control of that camera. So what I want to do is essentially make a camera, make it the view target of my player controller at the beginning of the gameplay. So that way I have a nice locked off camera there. So if I wanted to do this, the first thing I could do is I just have this kind of default scene open. I want to go to the actors area here and look for a camera and I'm going to drag and drop that camera into my scene. Now when I do that, a nice thing is that when we have the camera selected, we're going to see its view in that bottom right area. And a cool thing we can do that makes it much easier to place cameras is either to right click on the camera actor in the top right here or even on the object itself. And we're going to select this pilot camera actor. And what that does is essentially gives us control of that camera inside of our 3D space. So then what I can do is if I right click inside of the viewer here and maybe use my WASD keys to move my camera around. And I say, you know what, this is the view that I want of the content being generated here. Once I let go of that right click, what we'll see is that the camera actor itself isn't where I had originally put it. All of the movements that I've done and where I position the camera, those transforms get written to that actual object. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is if you are piloting the camera, remember to turn off piloting the camera. And you can see up here in the top left, we have pilot active camera actor. So if we wanted to disable the piloting that we're doing now, either we can click this little eject button to stop that or go back in our world outliner here, right click on it and hit stop piloting camera actor. So now you can see if I right click and move around, my camera's got that new home that we gave it right there. So that's great, we've got that set up, but we're still not really in control of it because if I hit play and I click inside of the viewer, you know, I'm still this free roaming character that can go anywhere inside of the scene. So what I want to do is now with my camera selected, I'm gonna go to blueprints at the top and open level blueprint. Now, previously we were using actor blueprints, which are great for things that you wanna throw in the world that are maybe gonna be interacted with or are creating kind of generative elements. But when we're talking about kind of the blueprints that are gonna set up our project or have a kind of higher level structure that they're working with, those are the kind of things that we wanna actually put in the level blueprints. And this is a good example of something we wanna put in the level blueprint because it's not really a specific interaction with an object in the scene. It's not really, um, an actor itself, it's kind of the project settings that we're thinking about so that when we start the game, use this as the camera and start us right there. So that's great. So we already know from our last video, when we're talking about when the game begins or when the scene begins, what we want is the event for begin play. So I can right click on that event graph background, type begin, and we'll see event begin play here. And then the next thing I'm gonna need is a reference to the actual camera. Now this is the really cool thing that when we left the camera actor selected in our world outliner, if I come into my level blueprint and just right click on the background, the context sensitive search, which is really nice because it always tries to find the thing that you might be looking for. And it can tell, hey, look, you've got this camera actor selected inside of your scene. Do you actually wanna create a reference to it? Perfect, so all we do is click that now we have a reference to our camera. And then the last thing we need is a reference to the player controller, which in this case is usually gonna to default to zero for what you're working on. So I'll just right click again, and I'm going to want to get the player controller. And what we'll see is get player controller here. Now, if you are searching for player controller or what we're gonna see in a moment, if your search results don't come up, 
don't be afraid to turn off the context sensitive search. And what you'll see is when I turn it off, it actually shows a ton more things that maybe are still related to player controllers. We can see the whole player controller class here, but now it's not trying to predict what you're actually trying to do. So in this case, I know that I do want that get player controller. So I'll click on that. And I wanna make sure that player index is set to zero. So now I've got all the three things that I need to know, which is an execute when the game begins, the player that I'm gonna set this view target, and the camera that is gonna be that new view target. Now this is a really good paradigm to start to get used to if you're working in Unreal, especially if you're coming from something like Touch Designer or any of the more kind of programmatic, uh, generative kind of node-based applications. A lot of the time there, we first get the object and then we act on the object. So you might get a reference to an operator in Python or something like that and then say, from this operator, do this action. Now in Unreal, the paradigm is a little bit different because what you're gonna have are just generic functions that do things and they're always gonna ask for references and targets for what they should be doing their process on. So in this case, what we want to find is the set view target with blend. So I'm gonna right click here, type set view target. And this is a good example because we want set view target with blend and we can see here that the context sensitive search actually isn't bringing it up because it thinks maybe we're trying to do something a little bit different here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off that context sensitive search. And then we'll see here we have under the player class set view target with blend. And this is a perfect example of this paradigm because this is just a generic function that sets the view target. And what it wants is a target we can see here by hovering over to the player object to perform this action on. And then also the new view target to which to use for its view. So great, so from our kind of previous little session working with blueprints, we know that we can grab the output of this event begin play, plugging it into the first top input of our set view target, so that way it executes on the start. Then I'm gonna grab my player controller output, that's gonna be the target of the player, and then camera is gonna go into that new target. So essentially we're doing this view target function on the player and telling it to look at the camera actor when the event starts at the beginning of the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile that, save that, close that, and now if I hit play, what we're gonna see all of a sudden is first, we're gonna have these bars on the side because the resolution of that camera actor is set to 1280 by 720. And then if I click inside, all of a sudden my mouse is not taking over my view. I can hit WASD and actually what you're gonna see is that now my WASD keys are moving the player around in the scene without actually interrupting my camera position or my focus or any of that kind of stuff. Now, that's gonna be the way I think most people are gonna to want to use their setup inside of Unreal, especially if you're working for kind of interactive tech or immersive media projects. And that same principle is also gonna work if you wanna use some of the nicer cameras. So for example, if you didn't wanna use the default camera, we could delete that. And then maybe we're gonna grab the cine camera. And we'll do the same thing, we'll drop it in, right click to pilot it. Let's get it into the right place here. Then I wanna unpilot it, and then just make sure inside of my level blueprint that I update the reference. And you can see now my reference is unknown because I deleted that previous camera we had. So what I'll do is just make sure I have my cine camera selected, right click inside here and create a reference to that cine camera. And with that said, now we're doing essentially the same thing, but with a camera who a lot of people like the quality more and especially the default setting with depth of field and stuff like that can be really nice. So with that said, I hope that gets you up and running and stay tuned, we're gonna have a lot more Unreal content coming for you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.